you want to go way back, my mom grew up vegetarian. We were recycling probably in the 80s. You know, and this is like, you're talking back in the day where we had these these buckets in our house. It was like cans went in here, newspapers went in there, and then you'd have to drive to the recycling center. So like before I even knew what it was, I was already kind of grown, like bred to like really have that in my DNA. Oh, we were separating our trash like way back in the day before it was even a thing. And it was funny, you'd go to these recycling centers and it was like, you put all your cans over there and your cardboard and your newspaper and whatever, you separated everything. So it was kind of in my blood from day one. But for me personally, like, I think when I stopped doing the tour and I came home, I realized like, well, I have a pretty rad community and it seems like I have a voice here and I, I want to use it in a positive way. So what can I do? So I came up with the Robin Chattel Foundation and it was like, Let's target the kids. Let's and let's give them environmental education, which is pretty well-rounded, right? You're kind of like leaving it pretty wide open. And it started with recycling programs in the school and went to uh, gardening programs and then eventually led to water programs. Every kid had a single-use plastic water bottle at school in their backpack. It was like the no-brainer. It was that time in our lives when it was like every parent just was like, yeah, you just toss those things around left and right. And uh, so it was like, let's change this. So we went into schools, put in refill stations and gave every kid a reusable water bottle. And now that's like really common is like to see a kid with it all stickered up, and dented and scratched. It's the thing, right? Every kid has it attached to their backpack. I think the world was naturally going to go that way. But I like, I felt like we were on that on the forefront of it and like educating the kids. And then what happens with the kids? They go home and they're like, Mom, Dad, what's up? Don't buy those stupid water bottles anymore. I got this, you know, and that's cool. We're lucky these days we got the big blue trash can that lets like all recyclables go in there. But I still think there's like the stage before it goes into that trash can, you know, like breaking down your cardboard boxes, really cleaning out like plastic containers and like getting them to a right place where they can be recycled. So you're not like polluting the recycling process. Um, we got this rad little machine called a Lomi, and it, it's a it's an in-home composting machine. And you literally take your scraps, you throw it in this bucket, and you just turn the thing on, and like 20 hours later, it's soil. And you I take it out, fertilize my plants. So it's it's rad. Like everything at home, we're trying to reduce the amount of plastic that's going into our house, and really just everything that's coming in, it's getting put in the right places before it goes out. My name is Wes Carter, and I'm the president and third generation leader of Atlantic Packaging, a company founded by my grandfather in 1946. I'm also a husband and the father of eight-year-old twins and a lifelong surfer, traveler, and outdoorsman. And I've seen firsthand the devastation caused by plastic pollution in our oceans, lakes, and rivers. Today, Atlantic is the largest privately held packaging company in North America, and we support companies in almost every manufacturing vertical which gives us the unique ability to use our influence to help the supply chain transition away from problematic packaging that threatens our global waters. A New Earth Project is a coalition of outdoor enthusiasts, industry-leading brands, and innovative packaging suppliers all working together to solve these problems. Because it's about all of us, it has to be. Please join us on our journey to a new earth. I hope what this you know, surfboard pack and, and this represents to, to everybody is that we can do this. Look at this. The safest surfboard's ever arrived. If we collaborate, uh, if we have the intention to package things better, to make more sustainable products. Are you pass? Look at that. To make more environmentally friendly products and packaging. It's so good. We can achieve these goals. You know, it just takes uh, intention. Incredible. If we can do it for surfboards, we can do it for anything. We're at Banzai Pipeline at the quarterfinals 
uh, on one epic, epic day. The weather's beautiful, the surf is amazing, um, and uh, you can't beat the view. So yeah, uh, everything's well with the world. When this house came on the market, we came over and had a look and we we're like, you know, um, this property could be really significant for this initiative, uh, for events just like this. Um, when we were evaluating it, it was like, you know, that never goes out of style. The inception of a new earth project was really about engaging the professional surfing community, um, which when I visited Hawaii and met Peter King, having the realization that the professional surfers, uh, the Kelly Slaters and the Kai Lennies and the Koa Smiths and the Carlos Munoz, those guys have witnessed this plastic pollution problem uh, even on a broader scale than I have. Surfing with a purpose, surf trips with a purpose, and we want to focus on brands and surfers that are interested in sustainability. That word gets thrown around a lot. It probably means a lot of things to a lot of people, and it probably means nothing to a lot of people. But trying to find ways to do and use best practices when making their products. Uh, Kelly Slater at Outer Known, John John Florence with Florence Marine X. They want to use the best supply chains possible to care about the people making the product. I mean, if you're a pro surfer, you're traveling all over the world for years in some cases. A guy like Kelly Slater has been doing it for decades. So those guys are the authority. They are global authorities on how bad this problem is and how bad it's been progressing. And they are passionate about advocating for it. We're gonna try and present the best strategies to move forward in the most eco-friendly, eco-conscious kind of ways. So we want to point those out and celebrate those kind of people. A New Earth Project was a collaboration that said, I hear you, I'm a surfer too. I hear you and I've seen it. And I am a part of an organization that is in a position to facilitate a change. And we can use the voices of the professional surfing community and take those voices and present them to the supply chain through a new earth project and Atlantic packaging and inspire change. No doubt sustainability is the trendiest thing. And I think people do it just to kind of fit into social circles. But you know, when you grow up here in Hawaii, specifically on these, you know, remote coastlines like the North Shore of Oahu, like the North Shore of Maui, where, you know, it's very country. Um, you know, you see what goes into the ocean, you see what's surrounding, you know, your environment and any piece of trash that you even see on the ground just kind of like hurts because the place is so beautiful that, you know, it just doesn't seem right. And, you know, I think it really encourages everybody in those communities to want to be, yeah, more sustainable, but not because you know, someone's telling you need to be, it just seems almost easier as well. Well, as, as surfers have grown in, in popularity and notoriety, I think it's given them a voice and their voice is, hey guys, let's take care of the planet, the ocean, the earth, you know? So um, we're the ones that are in the water more than anybody else and seeing the crap on the beach and, and having that awareness and getting the message through that, hey, we gotta take care of the planet. So as you get a voice, you know, it's enabled surfing to use that voice and try to make the planet better for future generations. Like, no one likes driving to the dump. And, you know, since I've grown up on Maui, you've seen that garbage dump mountain turn into a mini volcano. And I'm like, God, you never used to be able to see the dump from here. And, you know, what if those pieces of, you know, trash, the packaging that we get, just turned into soil? So I think there's just a long, path to get people on the right thing. But if you can create sort of a product, sort of uh, an idea that is better than the conventional thing, there's no reason why something sustainable wouldn't be easier and more convenient, better all the way around. And in that case, that's when you're gonna pique everyone's interest. 
to be right here um, front row at Pipeline uh, at the Billabong Pro is just surreal. And um, we've got a great crowd of people here, uh, a bunch of normal Joes like me, um, and then, you know, some, some really, really prolific people in surfing like Buzzy Kerbach shows up and uh, Seth Moniz's father is here and uh, we just watched Seth uh, win his heat. That was really exciting. Coffin unless John John does like crazy miracle, which he could, but I think Seth's got it. I think Seth is into the semis. Who is that? Hey! Who is that guy John out there? He just beast. Come on, guy. Come on, guy. community where you're always inviting your neighborhood kids other families there's something early in the early years that grandparents used to hanai grandchildren and it's still happening well now even more so in a community the kids would come over to our house and they become family. It's family. And you end up adopting, the word is Hanai, all these kids. And it was done back in a time where no legal documents needed, where the child would be brought up with the auntie, the uncle. And I think because of that part of the culture and living on an island, all these kids who come around us to this day, doesn't matter what age, they also feel that, that family, that we love them, we bring them in. But culturally speaking, that's something that's kind of organic on the islands, where you come into someone's house, come on in, you know, eat with us, hang out with us. Carlos Munez is here. Uh, it's been uh, it's been wild. Koa Smith's here. Uh, Kai Lenny was over here yesterday. So to have a location like this that everybody can feel like uh, a New Earth Project really is a family, um, which is how we've always tried to do things at Atlantic, and this is just an extension of that. We want this movement to feel like family. We want this movement to be collaborative. Um, and um, having great locations to share the love is what it's all about. Brands recognize that Sustainability, environmentalism, conservation is is being viewed by our regular everyday people as cool and, and interesting and, and necessary. You know, people are engaged with it. And so I'm telling you, through hard work and focus and dedication, God provides. You know, what's also big and helpful is having your community. There is support. There is networking of support. On the island of Molokai is where my, my lineage is from, my grandparents. To this day, there's a lot of locals there that do the bartering exchanges. You got hunters, you got the fishermen, and you have the farmers. And they feed off of each other. 
it's still happening there on that island. The one thing we are going to do is we are going to be the most sustainable industry in the history of industries. The surfing world, the surfing industry is going to be the beacon for everyone else to look towards. It will be the light. And we want this house to be a place where those collaborations can happen. And it's remarkable to me, the reality is, the very first time I came to Hawaii for this initiative was exactly one year ago. And 12 short months later, this is what we have. You know, we're here at the Billabong Pro with influential people from throughout this industry, young people, people that have been around a while, the veterans, and they're all here stoked to be watching this contest, but also talking about what can we do together to really transform the way that we view products and packaging, specifically in surf, with the greater mission of inspiring the greater supply chain. We want surfing to be the thing that everyone looks towards and go, look what they did in the surf industry. Look what they did. If the surf industry can do it, the greater outdoor industry can do it. And if the greater outdoor industry can do it and tell beautiful stories about that transition away from problematic packaging and products to sustainable packaging and products, if the outdoor industry can do it, the rest of the world can do it too. And so that is why we're here and we're super stoked. And again, you can't beat it. Best view in sports. One thing I would like to say, we had a really, one of the silver linings of the last two years where everyone was at home for two years and we were in an evolution of technology and e-commerce where you could virtually order anything and have it delivered to your house. Every American, European, Australian, global citizen got more packaging to their homes than they could have ever imagined. And for this initiative, that was a real silver lining because all of us, me included actually, um, got a greater awareness of, wow, look at all this packaging. Where is it going? What's recyclable? What isn't, you know? And so that level of awareness uh, woke consumers up. It was an awakening. And I think one of the really amazing thing is the consumer products companies, all these organizations that are making all these products that all of us buy every day, they get it. They are waking up to the fact that everybody else is asking these questions. And packaging today has become a brand attribute. Consumers are by and large judging brands ethically when they see their packaging. I think we're moving to a place where companies, if they don't move to a sustainable platform, will suffer financially. And so the, the power really is in the people. You know, the, the people demanding these products, that's what shifts the supply chain. And what I have seen over the last few months in particular is the consumer products companies see it and they're excited about it. They're ready to make these investments and they're coming to companies like Atlantic and saying, we want to do this and we want to do it on a grand scale. Companies are making major, major investments to be more sustainable in everything that they do. And they're making those commitments quickly because they understand that the consumers, you and me, are going to reward them. And that momentum can make this change happen quickly. And a New Earth Project, I want this to be a catalyst for that. I want this to be uh, the billboard, the messaging that says, world, universe, we need to do this now.